Good evening, Comrade Gazienko. Sit down. We were worried about you, Gazienko. Thought perhaps you were ill. You are ill, aren't you? You must be. You've been working too hard. Had a nervous breakdown. Your mind is temporarily affected, isn't it? Have you lost your tongue, too? He will help you to find it if you must. Your mind snapped. That's what happened. Didn't want to leave this lovely apartment, this plenitude of food, this easy living. Couldn't face going back to Russia. And so your mind snapped, didn't it? Don't be stubborn, Gazienko. You need only to return the few unimportant papers you took from the files while you were so upset. It'll be all forgotten. I haven't got the papers. Where are they? Come out, Colonel. You must be patient with the person who is sick. You see, Guzienko, we don't want to harm you. We understand. Now, where are the documents? Are they here? Search. Stand up. Trigorin, must I remind you you're speaking to a sick man? Help Pushkin, please. Um, where's your wife and son? You don't really expect me to answer that question, do you? I was just curious. There is no use searching here. It is obvious that his wife has the papers wherever she is. That should not be too difficult to find out. Trigorin is not as patient as I am, or as understanding. Perhaps it would be better if we all go to the embassy. I'm not going to the embassy, Ranyev. I'm not going anywhere outside this house, alive. You are sick, aren't you? Sick, maybe. Sick like Major Kulian was sick. You have a father, Gozienko. You have a mother, a brother, and a sister. Your wife has a mother, a father, and two sisters, all living in Russia. They had nothing to do with this. Exactly. They have nothing to do with this. And yet, you didn't think of them, did you? You didn't think of what might happen to them. We heard them break in. We called the police. What's going on in here? Who are you? Uh, we are from the Soviet embassy. Uh, Guzienko is one of our employees. He was recently ordered to return to Russia, but he decided to disobey orders and desert. Naturally, we couldn't permit that. We came here to... to reason with him. I came here to kill him. What have you got to say about this? What's happened to you? Why don't you speak? Anna, go get the documents. This is a most embarrassing situation, officer. As I have told you, this man is a Russian national who refused to return to his homeland. Actually, I think he's ill. In any event, this is strictly an embassy problem of no concern to... Anna. Give them to the officer. Those documents are Soviet property. They were stolen from the Soviet embassy. I must warn you. Unless you return those documents immediately, I shall be compelled to report you to your government. 
Well, this is kind of getting over my head. I, I, don't, I don't know. Officer, those are not only papers. They're a death warrant. When I gave them to you, I sentenced myself and my family and my wife's family to execution. We must all die sooner or later, so it doesn't really matter. It's how we die and why we die that's important. Take them away with you. And take my wife and child. This man is insane. As a representative of the Soviet government, I demand that you hand me those documents. You say they were stolen? Yes. Stolen property must be identified and claimed at police headquarters. That's the law. You will hear from my government. You will go now. You must not let them go. They'll come back. They'll never rest. Anna, them. Anna, please be quiet. We have nothing more to say. We'll put you under protective custody until the government looks into these things. Come along. Oh, you can... They're going to listen to you. They're going to listen to you. If you run out, you admit guilt. That puts the whole party on the spot. You've got to fight this thing from the floor of commons. Use every parliamentary trick you know. You've got to stir up the front organizations, the sympathetic newspapers and periodicals. Start them howling about forgeries, about witch hunts, about violations of democratic rights. That's fine. What if they send me to prison? You'll be a martyr. And by the time you get out, you'll be a hero. And will you be a hero along with me? The party comes first. What about Igor Gazenko? If he goes unpunished, others might do the same. Don't be too unhappy, Leeds. We'll name a city after you. When we take over. Moscow, urgent. The following members of the staff of the Soviet Embassy in Ottawa, Canada, will return without delay to Moscow. Comrade Nina Karanova. Comrade Lieutenant Pyotr Sergeyev. Comrade Colonel Alexander Trigorin. Comrade Ilya Planyev. Comrade Kulin will be pleased to see us. <laughs> Leonard Leeds found guilty, sentenced to six years. Helen Tweedy pleaded guilty, sentenced to three years. Donald Class found guilty, sentenced to five years. Dr. Harold Preston Norman pleaded guilty, sentenced to 10 years. William W. Hollis found guilty, sentenced to four years. Of the 18 arrested, two pleaded guilty and eight were convicted. Today, Igor Kuzenko and his family live somewhere in Canada. By special act, a grateful country has granted them all manners and liberties, franchises and privileges of our dominion of Canada, and may use and enjoy same freely, quietly, and peaceably as British subjects. But they cannot enjoy these rights. Their lives in danger, they live in hiding under the constant protection of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Yet they have not lost faith in the future. They know that ultimate security for themselves and their children lies in the survival of the democratic way of life.